CCY time is found under the time category, and this is a great effect for creating a motion trail off of a moving object. And it works on lots of different things. I just have my logo here bouncing around the screen, but I need to apply it either to a pre-composed version of my logo moving around with all of that motion contained within the comp or to an adjustment layer. So I'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And since my scene's not complicated, it's totally fine that I'm applying it to the background as well. But then I'll drag CC wide time out onto the adjustment layer and I immediately see some duplicates of my logo, kind of like the echo effect. But there are no blending options in this effect. It's very straightforward. I have forward steps and backward steps. These are the number of frames forward or backward in time that this effect is going to look to generate this trail on top of. So if I turn my forward steps all the way down to zero and I turn my backward steps up pretty far, then I'm gonna have this big ghosting trail. And you notice that right at the beginning, it's pretty transparent and that's because it is being applied to everything in my comp. So let me show you the difference between this and pre-composing this layer. If I go up to layer, all the way down to pre-compose, I'll call this logo and move all the attributes, meaning all these keyframes and everything I've applied to the layer, click OK, turn off that adjustment layer and instead apply CC wide time to just my logo. Then I can turn those forward steps back down to zero one more time, turn up the backward steps, and now the background's unaffected. So I have this trail going off behind my logo. Again, I don't have any blending controls, so I can't change how those duplicated frames are being blended like the echo effect allows us to but I could add a CC composite effect right after it, uncheck RGB only, and now the original unaffected version of my logo is being recomposited on top after that trail. Now I can put any effects before this to modify just the trail. So if I wanted them to be brighter, I could add say a tint effect just before CC composite, change the colors to something a little bit more hot, and then it's going to affect that trail. So maybe I'll make them both really bright. So this is without the CC composite and after, and then I could add say maybe a curves effect right after that, increase the brightness, also increase the alpha, so it's not quite so transparent, and then maybe add say a glow effect right after that, turn up the glow radius, turn down the glow threshold, and maybe turn down the glow intensity a little bit. And I could probably back off the alpha just a little bit as well. But now I have this trail that's coming off a little bit more hot and maybe 12 steps is too many. I could drop that down to six to have a shorter trail. And I could even increase the forward steps to have this projecting trail and maybe turn the backward steps all the way off. So it's a simple effect, but you can combine it with other effects to create things that are a little bit more interesting. The only other control is native motion blur is set to off. And to show you what that does, I'm gonna go back into this pre-comp, enable motion blur. So my logo is now blurring as it's moving fast. Go back to my main comp, make sure that motion blur is enabled in this comp, and then see that native motion blur is set to off by default. If I turn that back to on, then the motion blur is going to be applied to the trail as well. This is basically a motion blur override. It can look into that pre-comp, see the motion blurred was applied, and then get rid of it. But if you want it on, you can leave it on. And you can also apply this to footage. Uh, over here I have Shia LaBeouf, I've already keyed him out, and I put him on top of this background. And since he's separated from the background now, I could add that wide time effect and build a very similar looking effect. I'll again turn forward steps off, increase the backward steps, go forward in time a little bit and add a CC composite, again to bring back that original unaffected layer, uncheck RGB, and then I could again do anything I want. We could apply a tint to make this look very halo-y, nice bright trail behind him, add a glow to that, make it bloom out, look kind of like this energy. I could even add say turbulent displace before both of those. I could even put it before wide time so that it's affecting it before creating the trail and then just keyframe the evolution so that it's moving. Play that back. Maybe turn the size down a little bit. So now it has some more texture, kind of looks a little bit more like heat now. And to dial back the intensity of everything, I could add a transform effect. After everything but the CC composite and turn the opacity down on just that trail and play this back. And I can easily update that trail just by going to my CC wide time and increasing or decreasing the number of steps. It's a very simple to use effect, but it can create some pretty cool results. That's everything you need to know about CC wide time. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.